Yep, 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 yep. Hello, this is Matt O'Leary, and we're into the new decade, full steam ahead with the roaring 20s. And it's finally time for my top 15 albums of 2019. Like in previous years, this is actually a part two video with my uh, first half of the top 30 coming before this right here. And then I also named some honorable mentions of which there were a bounty. 2019 was a stacked year for new music, but there wasn't a clear number one. So you had like 10 albums, just fist fight gauntlet style battling it out for this spot. So there's still this internal turmoil over the rank order of these, but it's done now, so let's just do it. At number 15 is the formidable Sundara Karma with Ophilus's Alphabet. This is some glammy indie pop from England, and there's a ton of British stuff in my top 15 this year. The Bowie-esque bravado of Oscar Pollock's voice just fills every performance with so much punch and so much personality. He's really got something special going on here. In many ways, the synthy swagger reminds me a lot of the Killers, maybe Pet Shop Boys. And that does make a lot of sense because Stuart Price has production credits here and he worked with those two bands along with another very similar act, Everything Everything. And Oscar definitely has the presence of some of those big front men like Brandon Flowers, like Jonathan Higgs. Symbols of joy and eternity or, or illusions bring a heavy dose of disco to the party. But then we're back to more contemporary sounds and big EDM drops on the rapid fire single Higher States. One Last Night on This Earth, another gigantic hook and a very specific lyric you can really latch onto. A lot of oddly specific lyrics on this thing, like on a song for my future self with that suppressed Jungian shadow vulnerability abilities, or the reference to the record-shattering Australian freediver Herbert Nietzsche on Duller Days. I hope they just push the theatrics even further on future albums and, and maintain the all-killer, no-filler melodies on this one. The only progressive metal album of the top 15 is this next one. It's a solo project from the almighty Haken. It's Richard Henshaw with The Cocoon. The Cocoon is a very easy to understand concept and, and metaphor of this gradual blossoming and rebirth. This album is amazing. It's everything you'd expect from someone as technically gifted as as hardworking and technologically cutting edge as Richard Henshaw. You got a signature jagged staccato guitar on most of these tracks, but of course there's still a, a huge dynamic and, and tonal range in his playing and his uh, electronic programming. Songs like The Cocoon jerk you from idea to idea idea recklessly dangling off a high wire but he just seems so comfortable up there like whistling doing a little jig and there's even a, a little rap on this thing the song Lunar Room has a rap from Ben Levin, who's got his own project. He's a guest coming on here, and it gives way to the quirkiest section of the album with Twisted Shadows. These parts seem to mirror the eventual full expression of the hero as he emerges from the cocoon. Twisted Shadows juxtaposes some relentless gent with this jazz fusion, and Ross Jennings from Haken has a soaring lead vocal. It's just cool that Richard would make his own thing and then think, like, Who's the best person for this song? Oh, it's probably the guy who slept on the bunk above me in that tour bus. It's always refreshing to see such a supportive relationship between bandmates. My favorite track is the poppier Silken Chains with the ridiculous arpeggios and hi-hat programmed insanity. Richard's kind of sullen voice really works on this song. It also features David Maxim Michich, who's just a, a totally overlooked force in this genre. Former high school screamo band frontman Derek Ted unifies his sound on number 13. It's better spirit. Derek has a luscious country twanged tenor voice but does this kind of indie tronica thing instrumentally that's just so addicting. Every girl at my middle school would be like floored by this guy. It's got kind of a hello goodbye emo pop sort of thing going on. I can't even tell you how many times I've listened to the moment you arrive this year. That vocal on the chorus just kills me. And the hip hop beat on Tired with the self-deprecating crooning, right before he hits us with the unflinching optimism and nostalgia of So Me Up. It's a trendy assemblage of these very disparate styles that comes together so seamlessly that you don't even bat an eye. It's a can't miss record. It's a can't miss her.
Formerly under the moniker of East India Youth, William Doyle's celebratory interrogation of suburban English life comes in at number 12. It's Your Wilderness Revisited. This is Baroque pop with Doyle's just vivid tenor voice laid bare. There's a wide-eyed wonder and, and modern art pop instrumental palette that reminds me a lot of Nate Kinsella's project Birthmark with an album like How You Look When You're Falling Down. Every song has a unique, lush landscape that that brims with new life and and always keeps you guessing like design guide which goes from brand you know literally reading architectural design guides to emphatic and flowery electro pop labyrinthian into forever you got a guitar solo then doyle strips everything back to psychedelic vocal layers and a drum machine and ambient drones i love that doyle just had the guts to step away from a really good thing in East India youth and uh, you know just a space where he probably felt a little bit creatively pigeonholed. Then he made a couple kind of under the radar ambient records which when is ambient music not under the radar? Then come back with this album with these brilliant melodies once again. It reminds me a lot of what Trevor Powers is doing with Youth Lagoon. Your Wilderness Revisited feels completely self-initiated and not driven by any external force or expectation. Rounding out two-thirds of the way through this big honking list is Justin Stanton, the keyboardist, the trumpet player, and a founding member of Snarky Puppy. It's fascinating to hear Stanton's puzzle piece removed from the jazz funk collection collective powerhouse of Snarky Puppy, because you really, you understand uh, an ingredient in the secret sauce a little bit better. Mixed metaphors, mwahaha. And this album, Secret Place, is a smorgasbord. It presents every corner of his tastes and tendencies. Like Shoegazer has this mellifluous cool jazz and samba inspired sections, while Lacey is more about glitchy beats and these ambient panned pads. Automatic Attraction and What Do You Want feature transcendent guest vocals and scratch that R&B and funk itch. The title track is an emotional release. It is so dramatic. With a soulful synth melody and this lilting chromatic organ progression, the intensity will kind of die out and then one chord change just grabs your collar and demands your lunch money. That end crescendo is Magnificent. There's no other way to put it. Listen to this album with headphones. You will not be sorry. It is so layered and dense compositionally and textually. And I hear the best parts of one of my favorite Snarky Puppy albums, Culture Vulture. All right, number 10. Now, there are a couple breakout artists that really caught my attention in 2019. Lots of debut albums. And this one was my favorite in years. Madison Cunningham's debut album, Where Are You Now, is a jaw dropper. Seriously, what a talent. Cunningham plays a folk rock, singer-songwriter style, vocal inflection very similar to Joni Mitchell. She has a pretty strong background in Christian music and worship music, and I definitely hear a lot of that very organic, kind of verging on almost sterile tone in her music. But as she's worked tirelessly on her songwriting craft, she's developed much more of a inventive and adventurous style. Plus she plays a Fender Jaguar, which is badass. Pin It Down is a hard-nosed but slinky opener that jumps from these dusty, ride-heavy riff passages to these seven, eight playful choruses. Trouble Found Me also leads with this thick, fuzzy guitar tone and pairs that with the contrasting, twinkly, chromatic runs. It's pretty much a dead-on Fiona Apple attitude on this one, but she makes production and, and instrumental choices that are fresh and are supremely professional. Clearly the 22-year-old has some strong connections in the industry. I get a little Les Mis vibe from that dry as sand chorus. Anybody? Common language though, that is the best track for sure. Such an intimate verse that bursts into this sunshiny vocal that you think is the chorus, but wait. Then comes this huge ghostly head voice hook, an unstoppable debut and an avalanche of success to come. Hoping for something a little bit more experimental next, but still firmly connected to her roots, you know? Probably my most anticipated album of 2019 lands at number nine. A diverse addition to an already extensive catalog of bedroom hits. It's Sandy himself, that is Alex G with House of Sugar. I still think Rocket was probably Alex G's most 
complete album today, just a bold and singular statement from a true eccentric. And this album follows in that formula of a very jarring flow across the whole thing. It's got very digestible country tinged tracks like In My Arms and, and Crime and Southern Sky, interspersed with these garish experiments like Project 2 or Near, which make it impossible to pin down. And the great thing about that is there will never be another album quite like House of Sugar with an inclusion of such an array of methods and madness. But the downside of that, which is very similar to Rocket, is the listenability of the completed project. It truly does feel disjointed. That being said, I think Alex G's most mature moments are on this album. Hope is a chilling dedication to a close friend that was lost and, and taken by drugs and uh, it, it starts off very well grounded, but then comes and goes like a phantom's whisper. While Southern Sky regales us with some trippy tape loop effects and a warm acoustic progression, you and me, these are titles I can hardly speak. Are we bound here to an echo tinted blue and green? The whole idea of House of Sugar, this Hansel and Gretel story, the associations with our hedonic world and the embraces of our vices and excesses, it's all too relevant. Although I haven't quite put the gingerbread house together, if I'm being completely honest. The otherworldliness, the tangential, almost postmodern style doesn't really leave me with a strong narrative or, or takeaway other than Cool sounds, Alex. But it's clearly a meticulous effort from the lo-fi king and Gretel is song of the year. The hottest band in indie went metaphysical with number eight. It's UFOF by Big Thief. They take a lot of the alt country and the, the nifty noodling on earlier albums and really simplify on UFOF. Doubling down on, on some of the uh, more dark and enigmatic and ephemeral sounds from like Adrian Lenker's solo record or some of the songs off capacity like Coma or Watering. But one of the things I love about this band, and I've said it before, is with such a talented creative force as a front woman, such a great songwriter, it doesn't sound like the others are just trying to stay out of her way. They've really molded together as an inseparable force and the product is more than a sum of its parts. The idiosyncrasies of the drumming from Max just add adds a ton to this album. Like, yeah, it's a very understated, a very uh, just kind of scattershot style, like the little snarls on From, or Buck Meek with his endearingly sheepish harmonies. But ultimately it is the ease and the, and the sharpness of Adrian's writing that really breathes new life into a sound that could be very stale in 2019. In other words, if you're gonna do this thing, this thing, you better be great. And Big Thief, is that. UFOF, the track, triple axle, perfect 10, intoxicating, never grows old. When I reviewed this album, I saw a band on the rise and, and with momentum for sure, but now with a Grammy nod and next to Justin Vernon and Tom York and getting all this praise and attention that they truly deserve, uh, you know, two strong albums under their belt for the year, it's big time for Big Thief. Number seven, was bound to be on the list. They're always in the top 15 with one or two albums, and they just sold out two shows, not one, but two shows at Red Rocks. And that is King Giz, Fishing for Fishies. Yeah, I'm sorry, Thrash fans. I'm a sucker for the jazzy stuff. After Paper Mache Dream Balloon, I thought it was just kind of a, a one-time experiment. I thought the band would never return to this subtle jazz folk falsetto thing again. But instead of just delivering Dream Balloon 2.0, the band superseded my expectations with sketches of Brunswick East two years ago. And now has released the goofiest version of that low-key sound with some boogie rock. And while this album does ride on the band's signature repetitive blues sound, the songwriting is so diverse, the sound play so innovative, and the complete package is just incredibly fun. Even the songs with classic harmonica and blues progressions pack so much variety, like The Cruel Millennial or Plastic Boogie or uh, Boogeyman Sam. Plastic Boogie has this infectious 5-4 groove and these background vocals, they're just shouting and yelping over the whole song and it just adds so much life and energy. The bird song and, and this thing are probably my favorite though and, and the way they just they build the tension with that first instrumental chorus on this thing is genius. The harp glissando. To have EDM on Acarine and Psych Folk on the title track and 
Psy Boogie on the same record. This is glorious. Number six is a sensational pop album from the Netherlands. A little man with big hair and funky glasses. And this is somehow the first I've heard of him, even though He's got shout outs from John Mayer and Rex Orange County. It's Tim Van Berkestein known as Benny Sings with City Pop. Every track is this face. If you like Nick Hakim's Neo Soul Sound or Wolfpack's Goofy White Boy Funk, you're gonna dig this. But it's a little more melancholic than that, a little less tongue-in-cheek. Not Enough is a perfect representation of the less is more approach and tight, snappy grooves of Benny Singh's music. It's very vibrant and smooth and, and not self-aggrandizing like a lot of R&B nowadays, which is kind of about pushing a character to center stage. The songs are built on repetitive, jazzy, staccato piano progressions, silky earworm melodies and heartbreak remedy poems, dreaming or, or late at night, you can't write a more euphoric pop song, but familiar, that takes the cake, what a bop. I want every morning to start with this song, a brisk walk down the sidewalk, say how do you do, a little tip of the hat to the mailman, the neighbor lady hands me a scone, I do a little spin. Think of how perfect and pristine and seamless Can't Buy a Thrill is by Steely Dan, and this is a 21st century equivalent to that record. Time for the world to just give this guy their money. Some Scottish indie pop with choral vocals and classical elegance falls at number six, it's Health by C. Duncan. I reviewed this album earlier this year when that first track hits talk 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 still just as psyched c duncan left the flat and ventured out to a professional fancy studio for this third record which brought some fresh ideas and and a whole new instrumental palette to draw from the sound is just so crisp and and duncan sounds more expressive and excited about the music than ever this album will seduce you it'll sweep you off your feet it'll leave with a, a gentle kiss to the hand this album is that bowling guy from the early simpsons episode you know the kind of casanova Jock. At number four is my first exposure to this guy and what I've heard is his most accessible and hooky record. This is a weird album. I'll just, I'll be real with you, but like any great album, like any great art, you really don't know what you're missing until you find it. And that is Richard Dawson's 2020. Guitar master Richard Dawson plays freak folk, art rock sort of stuff. Very linear at times, like Joanna Newsom, but definitely a, a scruffier, more down-to-earth version. They're both equally genius, but if Joanna's a, a enchanting forest nymph, then Robert's a wandering vagrant with a peg leg. Dawson stuffs syllables together and contorts phrases to fit these preconceived melodies in the most ridiculous way. Painting dreary vignettes of life in 2020. A UFO enthusiast documenting sightings on his YouTube channel while his wife divorces him for a dude from Pilates class. A social pariah taking up jogging and beta blockers at Dr. Shen's behest. Or my favorite track, Two Hands, which captures the internal damnation of a young football player disappointing his dad. He misses an easy scoring chance and then has the ball bumble under his legs on a corner kick at the other end. I think this album kind of serves as a Rorschach test and I really do think that a lot of critics just get it dead wrong. They read into Richard's writing some political agenda that I don't think he intended to promote. His observations are, are rarely trite or, or fitting of some political ideology. Instead, they're idiosyncratic and depressingly ordinary at the same time. He is just fearless, he's uninhibited on 2020, and I really look forward to looking into some past records. This next album is, is probably one I'm most excited to share because it's just one of those crazy discoveries that can't be replicated. At number three, it's a Folktronica album that outclasses Bibio's this year and tempers its eccentricity with just very consistent songwriting quality. That is Wavoka Gentle with an amazing album, Start Clanging Cymbals. Wavoka Gentle is a London three-piece pairing the Tim Buckley-esque psych folk with this uh, kind of experimental pop like Buke and Gase. Punk Satani Phil makes their pop presence and sublime vocal harmonies known, throwing these unsettling horns and percolating electronics on top of a warm and, and grounding acoustic progression. The song fades into this ethereal meditation and then just comes back strong with a steady bass beat and the vocals all at once. It's just a thousand opera singers working in Starbucks made it on the FIFA soundtrack, which is pretty cool. This is one where I'd say just the breath alone 
is, is probably its greatest strength. You're just always surprised by what's coming next, even with multiple listens. The album stays strong all the way through, and some of my favorites are on the back half. There's such an intimacy to Gennesaret, which I think is a biblical reference. And Tell em Makoto has that Nick Drake sweetness, but with just such a, a sultry gospel voice that comes in and it just knocks you out. They really channel the restlessness of Animal Collective on Peculiar Form of Sleep. Such an ambitious album, I can't wait to see what comes next. And, you know, Yay Sayer, Dirty Projectors, Jose Gonzalez, even like uh, Caitlin Aurelia Smith comes to mind. Back in 2017, I stumbled upon this divinely crafted marble sculpture of an album called Themes for Buildings in Space. And it's someone else from Scotland, the composer Andrew Wasilek at number two with The Peralian. He's come back strong with another mesmerizing work that's inspired by his local landscape by the North Sea, this time commissioned by an arts organization for the restoration of a 19th century Grecian harp. So get this, he's stationed at this idyllic, castle looking mansion right on the coast. This guy lived the dream life that you imagine when you watch a really dramatic period drama like Jane Eyre. The Peralian is a meditative and, and very studied, very impassioned instrumental album that's very similar to some British Isles folk and 60s jazz. There's brass, there's piano, there's of course harp, there's hypnotic balearic beats. He weaves together these climaxes with such gravitas and just that tear-inducing hero's journey kind of thing that you feel at the end of Braveheart. He's got a delicate touch on a lot of it. Like, it's, it's very soft at times, but there are also these big, grand cinematic moments, and uh, it's just gorgeous and uplifting the whole way. It feels very cared for and, and just made with, with such intention that you feel the sense of, of shared pride with the artist. And it's great too for a, a bleak winter day at home. If you know me or if you've watched more than a few reviews over the years, you'll know that possibly my favorite band is The Reign of Kindo. I just never find bands that sound like them, but finally someone came along with the jazz rock sound, so slick, so clean, with song structures as concise and, and intricate, and an unmatched sophistication in progressive rock today. It's probably the least epic of a pick for a number one album of the last five years for me, but it's one I just constantly return to, and I'd take it on a deserted island. Oh, I'd take everything if I could, but you know what I mean. Live from New York. It's my top album of the year, Distress Signals from Earthquake Lights, whose singer sounds almost exactly like the guy from Sid Arthur. Seriously. The jazz chord structures and, and smoothness of the overall product make for an extremely luxurious experience. And we Will Never Be the Same is a track that juxtaposes the grandiosity of a massive string part with kind of these smoky jazz club verses. Mayday and Friends of Mine and Open Ocean are similarly very delicate and elegant tracks. There's a sweet minimalism to a lot of the album, like So Far No Luck, which makes the urgent moments hit all that much harder. It's a great study in restraint and con Contrast. Were You Listening and Moonlight are some of the catchiest tracks and just rock solid bookends to an absolutely airtight listen front to back. All the songs seem to hint at these themes of belonging and isolation. Miles Rodenhouse's chilling and spine tingling vocals are often left just completely vulnerable in the mix. Authenticity, man, it's here. Earthquake lights, distress signals, that's the one. They even sent this little handwritten note with the vinyl. Let me know what you think of these albums, and please just right now go down to the comments, share your favorites, maybe top five, whatever, just uh, things you wish other people could hear. And as always, thank you so much for watching.